I was just recording and I didn't press record. So we're doing it again. All right, Unbound, Anne Eberg, starting at page 161. I wake up in Aunt Tempe's bed. You done fainted, Aunt Tempe says. She touches my forehead. Get some rest. In the morning, you'll be fine. I move my palate and close my eyes. In the darkness, the chalky faces of Master Allen and the Misses swirl and bulge in a threatening circle. Fear sits on my bones, heavy as a barrel of lard. Waves of sickness roll over me. The auction block's a putrid place, Uncle Jim said. Folks is pulled and poked like they's a prize heifer. heifer. You hear auction and you run, he said. Auction's nothing but weeping mamas and whimpering children. That auction block is no place for my beautiful brothers. That auction block's no place for my mama, who's the prettiest in the country, and what's got nothing but the good Lord's kindness inside of her. Aunt Tempe leaves me to finish cleaning the kitchen and get ready for the morning. Master Allen's words mix with Uncle Jim's. They should fetch near enough. You hear auction and you run. I'm laying still as a stone, trying to stop the rolling and make a plan. They should fetch near enough. You hear auction and you run. Round and round I follow the words that circle and in my head it's aching. They should fetch near enough. You hear auction and you run. Round and round those voices go. You hear auction and you run. You run. You run. By the time Aunt Tempe returns, my plan is set. I pretend to be sleeping while Aunt Tempe changes into her night clothes and climbs into bed. When her chest heaves into a steady rhythm and her snores are whistling long and slow, I get up. My stomach still rolls, but I take a breath and I keep moving toward my plan. I rumple my bl blanket to look like I'm sleeping, and I tiptoe through the kitchen into the dining room. My hands is trembling, but feeling my way in the blackness, I open the side table and pull out the small bottle, the small blue doctrine bottle hidden behind Master Allen's brandy. The blue doctrine bottle that soothes Mrs. Delicate's nerves and helps her sleep. I tiptoe back to the kitchen, ignoring the quivering in my bones. I wrap leftover corn muffins in one napkin and dump half the pepper jar in another. I push away my worries about Aunt Tempe getting blamed for me disappearing or for what's missing in the kitchen, and I quietly slip out of the big house into the night. Forgetting the roots and brambles that might make me trip and fall, I race down the hill and I step into the moonlight, which shelter in Mama's cabin. Mama, I whisper. Mama, wake up. Grace? Her confused and startled cry wakes Uncle Jim, and I hush them both with a shake of my head and I tap my finger against my lips. Master Allen's planning to sell Thomas and Willie and you, I whisper. We gotta leave. Mama blinks and rubs her eyes, still half asleep, not understanding. Master's selling you and Thomas and Willie. We gotta run away. Pardon the interruption. Recess will be blacktop only today. I whisper scream. Tonight, now, we need to run away. Tomorrow, first thing, he's taking y'all to the auction block. Mama's eyes widen. Y you don't just run, Gracie, Uncle Jim says. It's too dangerous. You gotta have a plan. I open the cloth napkin and I show my supplies. We'll cover our tracks with pepper. We'll follow the ladle stars. Gracie, it's not that easy. Folks gotta watch for us. But Master's taking him to the auction block tomorrow. My babies. Oh, my babies, Mama yelps, clutching her chest. Hot shame burns my face. How can I tell her about all my lies and misleadings? How I can't be trusted and the good Lord knows it. How can I tell her Master Allen's selling her because the missus wants to teach me my place? How can I tell anyone it's my fault that we need to run? Only way to make things better is to lead them all away from here. Mama, please, tell Uncle Jim we gotta run away. We can't let Master take you. You said yourself, Uncle Jim, you said you hear auction and you run. We need to leave, and we need to leave now. From the corner of the cabin comes the rustle of straw and a soft whisper. She's right, Aunt Sarah says. It don't matter the reason. We can't let Master take any of you away. Uncle Jim breathes deep and closes his eyes, but I still see him twitching under his heavy lids. If we leave now, he finally says, we might make it to Cooper Swamp before dawn. Well, I stay in here. 
Aunt Sarah says. I's too old. I'll hold you back. Uncle Jim is already up and moving. I'll carry you, he says. Mama lifts Thomas and gives him a drop from the blue bottle. If we go, we all go, she says. Nobody stays behind. A burning shame shivers through me and a dizzying fear swirls in my head. What have I done? I push through the muzzy dark feelings that there's no time to think about. Nothing except running away. And that's the end of part one.